ready for our deep dive today. I'm already fascinated, and we haven't even started. What's got you so intrigued? Well, we're tackling the Tao Te Ching, which is always a mind bender. But specifically, some verses our listeners sent in about the Tao being, well, indescribable. Ah, uh, yes. The Tao that can be spoken is not the eternal Tao. Right? Exactly. It's like, how do you talk about something that defies definition? That's the challenge and the beauty of the Tao Te Ching. It uses words to point us towards something that transcends language. So we're dealing with excerpts from Stephen Mitchell's translation today. He translates Tao as the way, which kind of makes sense, like a path. It's a starting point. The Tao Te Ching is quick to remind us that any label, even the way, is just that a label. It's not the thing itself. Like trying to describe the taste of water. You just end up sounding, well, ridiculous. Exactly. We're so used to categorizing, defining. But the Tao is this fundamental force that can't be pinned down. Have you ever experienced something so profound, so moving, that words felt completely inadequate? Oh, absolutely. Like a breathtaking sunset or um, when you first hold a newborn baby. Words just fall short. Those moments where language fails us, that's the Tao peeking through. Okay, so if we can't even define it, how are we supposed to live in accordance with it? That's where the concept of emptiness comes in. And no, this isn't about nothingness, it's about potential. Potential. Think of a clay pot. It's the empty space inside that makes it useful. The Tao Te Ching suggests that this emptiness is where creativity, growth, everything emerges from. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. It's like that verse about the wagon wheel. 30 spokes meet in the hub, but it is the center hole that makes the wagon useful. Exactly. We tend to focus on the tangible, the spokes, but it's the emptiness that allows the wheel to turn. It's mind-blowing when you really think about it. It is, and it leads us to another important concept, Wu Wei, often translated as non-action, but it's not about being passive. So what is it then? It's about aligning yourself with the natural flow of the Tao, acting without forcing, letting things unfold as they should. So less about controlling every tiny detail and more about trusting in a larger process. Precisely. And you know, a lot of successful entrepreneurs will tell you the same thing. They've learned that by focusing on creating the right conditions, setting things in motion, they achieve far greater results than by micromanaging every single decision. Surrendering control to achieve greater success. Yeah. That's a paradox if I've ever heard one. But then the Tao Te Ching is full of paradoxes, isn't it? It certainly is. And perhaps the most fundamental paradox is the interplay of opposites, the dance between yin and yang. Light and dark, strong and weak. Exactly. The Tao Te Ching reminds us that true strength often lies in flexibility, in adaptation, like water. There's that verse, isn't there? A tree that is stiff and strong is most likely to be cut down. We often think of strength as being rigid, unyielding. But the Tao Te Ching suggests that it's in yielding, in adapting to change, that true resilience lies. Like a blade of grass bending in the wind, while a mighty oak can be toppled in a storm. And this concept of balance, this interplay of opposites, it's not just about our personal lives. The Tao Te Ching offers a radical new perspective on leadership as well. Okay, now that's something I want to hear more about. How does the Tao Te Ching reimagine leadership? What does the Taoist CEO look like? Well, it's definitely not about barking orders and demanding results. The ideal leader, according to the Tao Te Ching, embodies these principles we've been discussing. Balance, humility, non-action. They lead by not doing. Lead by not doing. How do you even do that? Think of a gardener. They tend the soil, they provide sunlight and water, but they don't force the plants to grow. They create the conditions and trust in the natural process. Ah, so it's about setting a vision, creating the right environment, and then trusting your team. Exactly. It requires a deep understanding of the natural order of things, a willingness to step back and trust in the wisdom of the Tao. There's a verse about this, right? Mm -hmm. The master doesn't try to be powerful, thus he is truly powerful. And it goes on to say, the master acts without doing, thus he sets everything in motion. It's a complete reframing of what it means to be powerful, isn't it? It certainly is. The true master leads with humility, putting the needs of others before their own ego. It's not about asserting dominance, but about empowering others, creating a sense of shared purpose. And then, this is the hard part, trusting them to get the job done. That trust is key. And it comes from a place of deep understanding, of recognizing the interconnectedness of all things, and of trusting in the wisdom of the Tao. Okay, I'm starting to see how radical and counterintuitive these leadership principles are, especially in today's world. We're so used to associating leadership with assertiveness, 
with taking charge, with having all the answers. And yet the Tao Te Ching challenges us to consider a different way, one that emphasizes humility, trust, and a deep understanding of the natural flow of things. This idea of leading by not doing is really making me think. It's exciting and a little intimidating, like we've only just scratched the surface. We have, and there's so much more to explore. Back for more Taoist wisdom. You bet. That last part about leadership has really stuck with me. It's a different way of thinking about power, isn't it? Totally. We're so used to strong leaders, the ones who take charge, make the tough calls. And the Tao Te Ching suggests that true leadership might look a lot more like, well, not leading. Right. But how do you actually do that? How do you guide without controlling? Well, let's look at verse 17. It describes different types of leaders and it says, the highest type of ruler is one of whose existence the people are barely aware. Wow. Barely aware. That's a pretty hands-off approach. It is. It suggests that a truly effective leader creates an environment where things just work. So it's not about being invisible. It's about everything running so smoothly people don't even think about who's in charge. Exactly. And the verse goes on to say, Next comes one whom they love and praise. Next comes one whom they fear. Next comes one whom they despise. It's like a hierarchy of leadership styles, with the most overt, the most controlling at the very bottom. The less you have to throw your weight around, the more effective you are. It's like that saying, lead, follow, or get out of the way. But instead of get out of the way, it's more like become so in tune with the way that your presence is barely noticeable. Precisely. It's not passivity. It's deep understanding, subtle guidance, making the complex look effortless. Which I imagine takes a lot of effort. It does. It requires a deep understanding of the Tao, of mm. those underlying currents that drive events being adaptable, responsive, knowing when to act and when to step back. Okay, that makes sense. But how do we actually apply this in our own lives? I mean, I'm not leading a country or anything. It's not just about leading organizations. It's about leading our own lives. Think about decision making. How often do we agonize, try to force a solution? All the time. The Tao Te Ching would suggest that sometimes the wisest course of action is to stop struggling, to create space for the natural solution to emerge. So when I'm feeling stuck, instead of pushing harder, maybe I need to let go a little. Exactly. It's not about being passive. It's about being receptive, aligning yourself with the natural flow of things rather than constantly swimming upstream. There's that verse, right? The softest thing in the universe overcomes the hardest thing in the universe. I love that imagery. It's so powerful. Water doesn't fight the rock. It flows around it. And yet, over time, it can carve canyons. There's that Bruce Lee quote, be water, my friend. Water is adaptable. It takes the shape of its container. But it also has incredible power. It's that soft power we were talking about earlier, isn't it? It is. It's about resilience, about weathering the storms without being broken by them. And that applies not just to external challenges, but to our inner world as well. Our thoughts, our emotions. Exactly. When we can approach those with a similar sense of gentleness, of acceptance, we create space for healing, for growth. It's like instead of always trying to wrestle life into submission, we learn to dance with it. Beautifully put. And that dance, that interplay between opposing forces, that's what the Tao Te Ching is all about. It's about finding that sweet spot, that delicate balance between effort and ease, action and stillness. Not about extremes, but about embracing the fluidity, the ever-changing nature of, well, everything. Exactly. And with that embrace comes a sense of peace, of knowing that we don't need to have all the answers or control every outcome to live a fulfilling and meaningful life. Okay, I'm ready to embrace a little more not knowing in my life. That's the spirit. It's a lifelong journey, of course, but it's a journey worth taking. It's one thing to talk about these Taoist principles like we have been, but it's another to actually live them. How do we bridge that gap from ancient texts to our daily lives in the 21st century? Well, I think that's the beauty of the Tao Te Ching. It's not just some ancient text. It's surprisingly relevant to the challenges we face even today. So how do we actually apply these ideas to our careers, our relationships, even just dealing with, you know, everyday life? Let's take the principle of balance. The Tao Te Ching reminds us that life is about finding harmony between opposing forces, right? Yin and yang, action and rest, striving and acceptance. It's like we're always told to hustle, to be on all the time. And yeah, I'm guilty of that too, but it's exhausting. It is, and it's not sustainable. The Tao Te Ching encourages a more balanced approach, 
reminding us that rest is essential, that by taking time to recharge, to reconnect with ourselves, we actually become more effective in all areas of our lives. Makes sense. You can't pour from an empty cup, right? Exactly. And what fills your cup, that's going to look different for everyone. Meditation, spending time in nature, pursuing a creative hobby, even just a quiet evening at home. The key is to find what nourishes you. So it's about tuning into what you need rather than what everyone else expects of you. Exactly. And that ability to listen to your own inner wisdom, that's essential for navigating relationships as well. How so? Well, think about it. The Tao Te Ching reminds us that true strength often lies in qualities like gentleness, compassion, yielding. Those aren't exactly qualities that are celebrated in a competitive world. No, they're often mistaken for weakness. But the Tao Te Ching suggests a different way of being in relationship, one that's grounded in empathy and understanding. So not about trying to change people, but meeting them where they are. Yes. Think about how water erodes rock, not through force, but through persistence and adaptability. It's the same in our interactions with others. It's our flexibility, our ability to meet people where they are, that allows for real connection and growth. It's about letting go of control, huh? In a way, yes. And it requires a lot of trust. Trust in the process. Trust in others. It all circles back to those core Taoist principles, doesn't it? Balance, simplicity, non-action. It's not about achieving some external measure of success, but about aligning ourselves with something deeper, more meaningful. Exactly. It's about finding that inner alignment. And from that place, we can navigate the world with more grace, more ease. It's a lifelong journey, isn't it? It is. But even small steps in that direction can make a world of difference. This has been such an eye-opening conversation. I feel like I have a whole new perspective, a new way of looking at things. That's what the Tao Te Ching does. It invites us to see the world differently. And to be different in the world. Precisely. To live our lives as a moving meditation, bringing those principles of balance, simplicity, and non-action into every moment. I love that. Living in alignment with the Tao. It's something to strive for, that's for sure. It is. And to you, our listeners, we leave you with this. What small step can you take today to bring a little more Tao into your own life? How can you embrace balance, simplicity, and non-action in your interactions with others and the world around you? The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step.